Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clueless Sate, and this is the pre-market AM report for a post-Memorial Day weekend. Last leg of the May, uh, the, for the month of May, May 26th, 2015. Let me get straight into the charts this morning. And uh, go over um, uh, go over some uh, critical levels here that we need to monitor very closely for our trades to work out as we uh, go for the last leg of the finish uh, here into end of month. I have uh, repeated and stated uh, uh, on a uh, um, uh, regular basis that uh, as a institution, if you're an institutional fund manager or a mutual fund manager or a pension fund manager, and you need to show uh, some sort of uh, monthly gain or performance for the month of May. You just have uh, a few days left. Uh, this is a shortened week, so we uh, uh, we uh, we have uh, today uh, going into Friday uh, for all the window dressing, uh, which simply means that you add alpha or excess return. I'm sorry, you add beta. Uh, that's volatility or momentum high momentum into your portfolio to generate alpha, which simply means generating excess returns. So far, markets have performed very well, uh, as we have as I had forecasted weeks ago, if not months ago. And as you can see behind you very clearly, uh, we have a large macro rising wedge uh, that, uh, that was initiated uh, back here uh, on October 15, 2014, which I'd like to remind everyone, and as I've reminded and, and worked through with all my advanced coaching session members, uh, that was a pivotal low in the markets. And, um, and as we are climbing up, as you notice, a rising wedge is simply a narrowing of the trading band, uh, and that's exactly what's going on. So classic textbook, if you look at it this way, uh, says that uh, we should get to the top of this channel, maybe a little breakout, but top of the channel, uh, which would be around 2165, uh, if not around uh, 2160 uh, on the S&P 500. Once you get to that level, you have a corrective uh, uh, reset uh, pullback, and that brings us down again. And you can see that happening over and over again. On these corrective pullbacks, mind you, these these uh, big support levels, the volatility support levels, if I if I may call that, and they uh, they were held. Uh, they never got to the bottom uh, of uh, of the of the uh, rising wedge, which would be the uptrend line, uh, which would be, uh, um, in my uh, opinion, uh, a better buying opportunity. Whichever the case, uh, the support levels are all here indicated in red. And uh, and this is uh, this is the um, uh, this is the breakout, the extending triangle breakout, if you want to look at it that way. And uh, if I go back a little bit, you're going to see that. Uh, one second. So anyway, going back to uh, uh, let me stay on track. Uh, going back to ascending uh, uh, triangle breakout, which would be this level, uh, and that was around 2120. This is acceleration channel, the new channel that was created on uh, that I drew and showed uh, that was created on the 6th of uh, May on Wednesday, earlier part, first week of the month. And if you want to look, you know, in hindsight, that looks like that's where the bottom was put in for the month of May. So if we do have a large corrective action, the first level of support that comes in is 2066. And of course, then you look at the uh, red lines here, 2037 and then down here at 1971. I do not expect that over the next four trading days uh, that we basically correct all the way down here. Saying all that, we can we should be prepared to expect the unexpected. We have a lot of uh, a couple of quick macro uh, fa uh, global macro factors that need to be taken into account. We have a very busy week with US domestic uh, economic numbers. Uh, then we have the Greek situation that's developing. Um, I've been posting some very relevant and important um, uh, tweets out there regarding what's happening. And uh, the Greek situation is out there. We have, uh, we have a lot of Fed speakers uh, who have already started talking. So, oh, home sales, extremely important. And, of course, the inflation data in the form of the PMI um, uh, um, flashes, industrial uh, uh, um Purchasing Managers Index. Um, so we have that. Then we have uh, um, what's the other one that I 
and I'm going to be putting this up in the calendar uh, within the reports. So all of you can mark it as sort of the volatility clusters when we can expect the market to do some really funky things. Um, we have, uh, what's the other one that I just looked at? We start off, well, forget that for a minute. We start off with the durable goods, which are coming out in uh, in approximately one minute. Um, and uh, we're going to we're gonna see how the markets react to that. Again, you know, that's, like I said, it's a, uh, markets are uh, uh, pre-planned here to do what they need to do. So whatever levels that we're going to be trading in, as I'm showing to you, are the levels we should hold. Now, we have a rising uh, 34 and a 50. Um, you can you can you can track that as levels of support slippage through the 50 and the 34 34 and the 50, uh, which I show uh, uh, consistently are you know can happen. Uh, we would like this uh, we'd like this uptrend to continue and uh, to the most optimistic scenario for the bulls would be that on a short term basis uh, we come down to about 2094. So that's about uh, uh, 30 points. Uh, that's 30 points. That's roughly about 180 Dow points and then bounce from here. That gives us a good solid buying opportunities. That's this yellow line. Stochastics, if you look at the internals, look at the basic stuff, basic simplest uh, stochastics. We are overbought. There's no question about it. A reset is likely. This is a daily chart, mind you. Um, and um, a reset uh, uh, can happen at any time. And also keep in mind that we could basically do this type of format where we kind of stay above. Uh, stay above uh, uh, the, the the 70 line and and um, create this type of volatility straight within a trading band. So we could come down here and then just zigzag around. Now, why is this important to us? It's very simple. It's important to us because every trade that we put out there is uh, is uh, 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 working within the framework of um, within the framework. The durable orders just came out, and that's 0.5%. The consensus was 0.3%. Uh, durable goods were minus. April durable orders, oh, were were negative uh, half a percent versus uh, what I believe was uh, at least the briefing consensus was negative 0.6%. And X um, X transportation that's taking out the airline orders and all that stuff. Um, you are seeing, uh, uh, you know, they were. They were uh, up half a percent. Anyway, um, we are, you know, we're going to see some volatility pre-market on that. Nasdaq features up four. If this was really a bad number, real simple here, okay? And and, and a lot of the times these numbers are very difficult to read because a lot, lot of subcomponents. Uh, we would be uh, down, and you know, we might be. I don't know. We would be down a good uh, 10 uh, to 15 S and P points in a in a, in a quick second. But uh, looks like uh, the Nasdaq futures uh, are, are are holding out, so that's a reasonably good sign. Now, keep in mind, from a trading perspective, we want a slight we want slight weakness at the beginning of the day, uh, and then we want to move up. So that's the S&P 500 on a daily basis. Now, let's look at the look at the traders' time frame, which would be the uh, uh, which would be the um, hourly time frame. Uh, this is what uh, we are seeing here. Um, as you can see, we need to move this line up. You got two levels here that we broke out, right? And they test off these levels. If you know, you got to move around a little bit. Uh, is uh, exactly where we're coming into right now. Now, this S&P uh, 500 chart that you're looking behind you is a static chart. Uh, this is not one that's moving with uh, pre-market uh, futures. So uh, right now, uh, we are pretty much uh, we're basically you know uh, down to these levels here, around 21, 21, I believe. Okay, let's take a look at the Russell 2000. Um, this is um, this is a classic. Uh, uh, this is a classic rising wedge, you know, diagonal, whatever you guys, whatever it's called. Uh, I call it the rising wedge. And uh, at this point, we are creating a consolidation channel. The lower end of the consolidation channel is around 12.48, which also was the support on Friday. Okay, so that needs to hold. And if it slips below that, then we're going to come down and test uh, the 12.40 level. But again. Somewhere in here uh, would be a good buying opportunity. We'll be watching it very carefully because by that time we would be nicely oversold. And the more oversold we get, the better off a buying opportunity it is. We all know what the Russell 2000s can do. We we have done uh, uh, doubles and triples uh, on this um, 
on the Russell 2000 calls, the IWM's the same way, which is the ETN for uh, uh, for uh, ETF for uh, the Russell 2000 index. And keep in mind that the Russell 2000 is very dependent on U.S. economic numbers, home sales and such. And because we have a slew, a data deluge uh, over the next couple of days, including today, uh, be aware of the fact that uh, any moves that you see are suspect up or down, uh, given the fact that the volatility clusters will be making sure that traders are out of the game uh, prior to uh, any sort of large move up or down. Uh, my uh, guess remains the same and a, an educated guess uh, forecast that we're going to end uh, uh, this month on a strong note, uh, keeping uh, the performance figures on the, on the institutional portfolios and the pension funds in the green. So that's what we're looking on the Russell. Let's take a quick look at the, the NASDAQ composite. The NASDAQ composite, this is a daily chart. This is a, a, it's a beautiful chart here. I've been walking people through this chart for many, many months now, and everything pretty much what I've said have come to fruition. So I drew this line here. Maybe I should move it down here. Um, so at this point, uh, a sharp pullback uh, uh, down to 49.70, that's roughly about a 120-point pullback, uh, would mean that the, the apples would be down about $2, and, uh, the, the, and, and the rest of them uh, would be down um, you know, anywhere from 1% to 3% would be a good buying opportunity. At this point, um, we have a um at this point we have we need to basically break out of this uh uh if you want to look at it this way this is a uh, this is a double top um but if we break out of this double top or this cup formation that we're seeing here create a handle let me get my drawing tool okay here we go so we could be creating a uh, uh we could be creating a nice uh, uh, consolidation channel and uh, that can engage with the 50, rising 50-day moving average somewhere here and a move from here uh, would be the best optimistic scenario so let's see uh, you know let's see what happens we have a bunch of big mega cap tech uh, telecom type of mergers uh, buyouts that take place uh, charter communication buying time warner so that's going to cause a lot of uh, the the ripple effects in the sector. So let's keep an eye on Netflix and uh, and uh, Google and some of, and and pretty much all the Nasdaq 100 ones that we play. So again, that's what we're looking at uh, from a point of um, a consolidation. If we break below the trend line, things start to get a little dicey. Then we have this level of support here, 4900. Uh, and of course, if we break 4900, the whole there's it is. Uh, I consider that to be a trend change. Um, still believe that June is going to have a nice corrective move down, and uh, this level could come into play, and that would be a fantastic buying opportunity. Hollow candles that I keep on showing all the time. Uh, this was a hollow candle uh, a reversal. Not for, the body of the candle should have been more hollow, but whichever the case, you know, I point that out because once this type of things happen off a low open in the, the market, um, you know what happens. This is, you know, this is the type of uh, this is the type of move you get. So when it, when I when I point out these hollow candles for a lot of the new members, keep in mind that's a very positive sign. And uh, look at this here. And I've uh, pretty much always made money of uh, buying these hollow candle reversals. Remember, as traders, we always want instant gratification. That's what we want in life too, right? Uh, but at the same time, it doesn't always work like that. So we have to make sure that we cost average, that we play the volatility, follow the Twitter real-time feed, and uh, let's make a lot of money this week. All right? So um, that's it. Thank you for listening.